Good afternoon, Amador County. As promised, we're here today to discuss with Paul Molinelli Jr. Paul, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. We're going to discuss uh, Paul's service on the grand jury in this year's grand jury selection and, and try to touch on on some of the processes uh, involved in grand jury selection. Um, just for the viewer's edification, though, I, I wanted to note that uh, this year's grand jury had uh, had formed itself into several committees. Uh, those were County Administration Committee, the Criminal Justice Committee, the Education Committee, uh, a follow-up committee that was designed to follow up on issues that a previous grand jury had recommended uh, the subsequent grand jury follow up on, Health and Human Services Committee, and then our report also includes the responses to last year's. So uh, I guess my first question for Paul is, Paul, how, how are jurors selected to be on the grand jury and, and how do they arrive at their compilation of committees? Uh, about a year ago, well, not this time, but in April of last year, I received a letter from the Superior Court mm -hmm. saying that I had been selected mm -hmm. to possibly become a member of the grand jury. Uh, at that point, you can decline for hardship reasons. You, you're working out of town. Sure, sure. You're just not, can't not feeling well. Just can't make the time commitment. And if you agree to go forward, the next thing is a meeting with the judge. <clears throat> so in in May, I went to a meeting uh, in the Superior Court with Judge Harlan, who was the presiding judge for this year's, the 2012-2013 grand jury. And I was interviewed by her. And again, I had an opportunity to, you have an opportunity to decline mm -hmm. due to, you know, perhaps, you know, hardship, another type of hardship. I elected to go forward. She said that the commitment would take about Mm, that's five to six hours a week for a oh. year, uh, you know, b between committee meetings and the general sure. meetings. Significant commitment. Significant commitment. And if you, she said, if you can't do that, then I understand and you can go. I said, well, I'll move forward. So from there, we go to uh, on July, f the first Monday in July is when the terms start. So we were summoned to and notified of a meeting at, on that date last year, I don't remember what it was where we all of the people who have been who have went through all of the processes meeting mm -hmm. meeting with the judge up to that point, to that point mm -hmm. are all assembled in the superior courthouse the, the judge comes in talks to us and then all of the names are put into a hat so there's still a possibility you may not get picked so there's there's 19 <clears throat> uh, juror members i believe well, the, well the, there's 19 juror members plus i think about Five or six alternates, but there could be as many as thirty. But or there's 40 there's like forty people. The there's like forty people that are sitting into the in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. So nineteen people are picked. I randomly happen to be. I happen to be one of the nineteen, <laughs> and then we the other eighteen were selected, and a, a four person at that point. The judge looks for a four person. Uh, I was asked to do that. <laughs> I respectfully decline because that is a that's a big tight commitment we and another uh, person was selected for the four person mm -hmm. and then the following week we met for the first time the all 19 and decided to um, break up into you fill out like a questionnaire or of like what you're interested in are you interested in uh, criminal justice issues are you interested in uh, you know, how the county government works or how the city government works and based on those responses is how the committees were formed. So, so the committees are formed based on responses of, of jurors in this right. questionnaire, right. But, but I would think also committees have to be formed to investigate right. the, the chosen complaints. Right. And, and maybe you could tell our viewers, how, how does the grand jury, now that it's compiled, how do they review the list of complaints, letters, uh, you know, requests for investigation, all those types of things that come in. How do they, how do they review those and ascertain which ones will be, will will rise to the level of being investigated by the grand jury, and which maybe appear to be uh, politically motivated or or some sort of ideologically biased right. complaint that is <clears throat> not in the purview. Anybody can file a complaint about something in the government. It doesn't mean because they file a complaint that it's a 
investigatable complaint. So the uh, we elected to meet the second and or the first and third Mondays, and each meeting uh, complaints were presented to the full grand jury, and by, they were by the by judge the four person or the four person. The, the okay. judge steps out of it after she appoints us. The judge steps out of it, and a four person is selected, and that four person appoints the committees and runs the meetings and make sure order is kept and people are doing mm -hmm. what they're supposed to do. So the very first meeting we assigned, committees were assigned, a letter comes. Somebody is complaining about X. Mm -hmm. uh, it is discussed amongst the full grand jury. If the grand jury feels that it is a legitimate complaint, it's then assigned to the appropriate committee. So say someone... Does that necessitate a vote amongst the yes, entire grand jury? Yes, it is, it is fully vetted out. And uh, if the grand jury doesn't feel it's an com investigatable complaint, then it will not and, and that vote is just a simple majority of the grand simple jury? Simple majority board. of the grand jury. So you, you, could have, you could have nine people that feel something should be investigated, but if ten don't, then it doesn't go. It doesn't, right. Okay. Right, hmm. right. It's, it's the... It, just so the viewers know, the grand jury is not doesn't offer legal advice. It doesn't can't make somebody provide information they don't want to provide. But and it's and it's not it's not about our personal opinions. Mm -hmm. It's about f the facts. If if we don't feel that that complaint has is based on a fact, it mm -hmm. won't it won't happen. If we do then it's assigned to the appropriate committee and that appropriate committee then looks does their their due diligence and interviews people and gets to the bottom of it and it may come out at, out of that investigation that that even that complaint may mm -hmm. lead to nowhere lead to nowhere yeah. well and and i think maybe some of that is the distinction between a civil grand jury which right. this is right. versus a criminal grand right. jury like you said it's not it's not really criminal complaints. You're not deposing right. people, and, and there's not a lot of uh, teeth, I guess, if right. you will. We but can't, there's recommendations that right. come out of this. This, this, grand, this is a civil grand jury. This has nothing to do with any criminal activity. That the DA would 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 mm -hmm. investigate that, you know, himself and his team would right. pursue criminal complaints. This is just a civil grand jury only. Well, and to that end, a couple of the uh, civil matters that are that are seemingly always in the news that that I caught attention in trying to review this uh, this tablet here of the grand jury and this report. is the first time I've seen it by the way <laughs> uh, I've been trying to to read through that but the the county administration mm -hmm. was uh, I don't want to say investigated but I they, I guess they reviewed our our performance as far as uh, right. how we administer the primary function right. of the county uh, county government, at least board of supervisors, and that is our our fiduciary oversight or our, our budgeting prowess. And and uh, I, I'd like to announce to the public that the grand jury gave us a pretty glowing uh, pretty glowing status. Uh, would uh, would like to see that we continue to maintain a healthy reserve fund at Amador County, and that we strive to maintain. A uh, three percent contingency fund, which we have fallen shy of in these uh, recent years, uh, as a result of our tight budget times. Uh, also recommended that that maybe we have a, a little more training available for those of us, and and most supervisors have come out of the private sector in one way mm -hmm. or another, and uh, tend to have maybe a little better understanding of of private sector accounting. I know I certainly did. Mine was always a private business right. model. And, right. and you understood private business accounting, but government and fund accounting is, is a completely different ball game. And there is a learning curve to, to picking it up. Having, so uh, Having once served on the school board, yes, government accounting is, <laughs> is very different from private business. It sure, sure is. It, and the other, the other issue of note, and, and again, this has been a topic that's uh, been in the news lately, and that is the gravity supply line project in the upcountry area. And, and I uh, wanted to take note that uh, the grand jury determined that the gravity supply line project has to be evaluated on its own merits and without political bias. I think anybody paying attention to this issue recognizes that there's been ample political bias involved in, in some of this. And, and uh, it's nice to know that the grand jury came to that uh, that conclusion. I will. I will say that uh, 
due to the fact that a relative of mine is serves as the president of the water agency, I did not participate in that part of the investigation. And, and, and that gives that. you the opportunity to right. recuse and, right. and avoid right. that. Right. To me, Paul, and I mentioned to you at our break that I had a personal issue as a supervisor of, of uh, becoming aware of, of one of the complaints that came into a past grand jury long ago. Mm -hmm. And it was obviously one of those politically motivated or, or ideologically biased complaints. And uh, at the time, I, I don't recall whether the grand jury at that time uh, chose to investigate that, but I would hope that there was an ample uh, checks and balances in the grand jury's process that keeps that type of thing to a minimum. And would you would you feel that there is? Yes, I do. After your service, I, on after it? my service, I, I feel that there is good checks and balances that that would prevent something that's politically or ideologically motivated from moving forward. There, it's again, it's not about somebody's opinion. It's about the facts. Mm -hmm. Did this did this happen or did it not? And our job is to find out if it, if it did, then we will investigate it. But if we determine that it did not, then we That's, politely tell the person making the complaint that this is not your venue to pursue. Well, that's good. I, I know the Board of Supervisors has always presented a list of potential grand jury uh, selections going into the upcoming year of the grand jury, and we're we're allowed just I think largely as a result of our of our knowledge of a lot of people throughout the county to weigh in as to the suitability of some of those folks. So it's good to have a, a little input on on that selection process. Mm -hmm. Folks, we will be uh, going to a break next and uh, back with the news shortly thereafter. So stay tuned to TSPN News. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.